Is it a Celtic knot? A Star Wars faction icon? The official emblem of the Society of Fountain Pen Fanatics? Nah, it's just the Twisby logo. Yeah, I think it's a bit soon for me to be showing one of these, too. But seriously, who's going to turn down a Twisby? Not me. I've been using a bunch of $2 fountain pens, so next level sounds pretty good, actually. This is my first encounter of the Twisby kind. Although I'd intended to get one eventually, I hadn't expected it to be, like, now. And because I like to belabor a point, yes, it's early in my fountain pen adventure to be waving around something like this, but I like to take advantage of sibling generosity when it appears. Yeah, I totally lucked out when a relative gifted this to me last month. Of course, I was thinking small, like the more budget-friendly Eco model. In fact, the Eco was so firmly planted in my head that it took several minutes of handling and ooing and eyeing over its features before it dawned on me that this is not a $35 pen. It's the Twisby Vac 700R. Shall I repeat that? The Twisby VAC 700R. Not only that, but the Iris Edition with titanium finish. I admit it, there was a lengthy struggle trying to get this thing open until producer Mike pointed out the adhesive tabs. Maybe attach tabs on the tabs so they aren't so hard to see. You think fountain pens are expensive. Try shelling out several hundred bucks for corrective eyewear every few years. Then see how happy you are that people are sealing things with invisible yet vital for opening tabs. So, thoughts about the packaging. Clean, functional, modern-ish. A bit white kitchen-y for me. Look, I get that not everyone shares my love for rusty metal rivets and lacy parasols. Plus, I'm worn out from the tab thing, so I'm not fighting the Space 1999 vibes. It felt like I had just gotten my pen BBS and Jinhao nibs wet, and now I've got my hot, greedy hands on not only next level, but next next level. Not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little out of my depth. You won't hear detailed minutiae about design and engineering here, but stick around because a little later, there will be lingering shots of a greased-up gasket and some plunger action. Because VAC stands for vacuum, referring to the type of ink-filling system involved here. No cartridges or converters, just good old suction power. And everyone likes that. Also new to me is what I assume is a safety feature. At the end of the pen, there's a knob that's attached to a steel rod. And when that knob is completely closed, the barrel, and thus the ink reservoir, is sealed from the nib and feed section. So if you're riding along and your ink stops flowing, just untwist that knob a bit to open that up and get the ink flowing through again. That could become an annoyance, but I understand why it's there. To reduce the potential for inky accidents. I mean, that's a lot of ink in there, and a leak could cause quite a bit of damage, or at least a lot of cleanup anyway. Oh, a word of advice. Don't toss out the box with last week's leftovers like I nearly did, because there are more goodies inside, namely replacement O-rings, 
a wrench, and silicone grease. Now, don't go getting overly excited. They're for the pen. I've heard elsewhere that it's unnecessary to apply grease the first time, and that it should be smeared over a couple of other parts, too. I mean, there's no such thing as too much lube, right? But what sort of YouTuber would I be if I did things like everybody else? I'd be predictable and boring, which isn't good for the algorithm. Or, wait, it is good for the algorithm. Oh, I just don't even know at this point. Being the special iris edition, it has a titanium finish, which apparently makes this coloring possible. Since I don't entirely understand it, they could have called it the magic edition as far as I'm concerned. Being a fan of the transparent demonstrator style, this design really floats my boat. With all of my other pens so far being lightweight, this feels hefty in comparison. By the way, the R part of the VAC700R means this is a revised design. What I've gathered from cursory investigation is that they tweaked how the valve works to improve ink flow. Don't quote me on that. Now, a major difference between this model and the Eco is the filling system, because the Eco has a built-in piston filler. This VAC700R is my first pen with a vacuum filling system, and I was tickled by how it works. Basically, you retract the rod and slowly push it in, creating negative pressure inside the barrel, until at the end where the channel flares a bit, you release that pressure and the ink rushes in. Oh boy, somebody with a puerile mind could go to town with this stuff. Thank goodness I'm more mature than that. This is my dedicated pen and ink logbook. I described this pen as limited edition, but I'm not all that clear how limited it is. I could have gone with special edition, I guess. 
the ink here is Pelican's Dunkelgrün, or Dark Green. Ivy doesn't quite match the subject of the sample writing, which is edible greens, but Ivy is easier to draw, so... Plus, I associate Ivy with mystery and fantasy. During my school years, every weekday, I walked by an old house, mostly hidden by trees and shrubbery, but the stone wall and steps were covered with moss and ivy. It made the place irresistibly fascinating to me. I imagined that beyond the overgrowth was an enchanted cottage inhabited by a witch, and perhaps there were even fairies who frolicked in the flower garden. Then one day, the trees and bushes were severely cut back, revealing a couple of folding lawn chairs and a cracked and dirty kiddie pole. I was crushed and moped for weeks afterward. This was a couple of days later, after getting a new bottle of ink, Airband's Poussière de Lune. Say it with me. Poussière de Lune. Translation, Moon Dust. It's a lovely red-leaning purple. I've had my eye on this color since before buying my first pen, and it's a beaut. Since this was the second time filling this pen, I was feeling confident enough to fill the reservoir a tad more than last time, so I repeated the plunging action until most of the barrel was filled. It was a little tricky. I had to push all the ink out at one point before getting a good fill. Although I think it's a clever system, I might take Sarah Bailey's advice and get some blunt end syringes and use those to fill all of my pens. She has just dropped a super informative video aimed toward beginners. So if you want to learn about fountain pens and the inks that love them, check it out. Sarah Bailey's Everything You Ever Wanted to Know About Fountain Pens. The link is in the description.
I don't think this is quite the right shade for eggplant, but it's so pretty, and it's the only purple fountain pen ink I have. Cooking eggplant isn't something I do, mainly because it's one of the hardest vegetables to get right. That spot between undercooked and overcooked is one of those blink-and-you'll-miss-it things. And can we agree to call them aubergines? Eggplant does not sound appetizing to me in the least. I mean, if my mom had ever called me to dinner with, come and get your eggplant, chances are I would not be the well-adjusted adult before you now. Honestly, I'm not a fan of the red logo on the end of the cap. Unless that same red is echoed on other parts of the pen, it's always going to look garish. But that's a nitpick and a non-issue. Straight up, I love this pen. It writes great and looks fabulous. It feels good in the hand and is the star of my admittedly modest collection. That said, I would not buy the Twisby Vac 700R for myself. But that's only because, at this point in time, spending $80 on one pen doesn't work for me. Look, if you're sitting on a pile of disposable income, then by all means go and buy it. Heck, get two. And if you aren't into the whole multicolor thing, there's a less flashy version that's also clear, but with black accents. For only, only, $70. I'm happy to share this experience with you. Yeah, it's kind of fancy. But believe it or not, there are people out there that consider an $80 pen to be moderately priced. Then again, you're listening to someone who buys her underwear in a 10-pack for 12 bucks. So, perspective. Until next time, remember, the Society of Fountain Pen Fanatics doesn't exist. But maybe it should. And stay artsy, my friends.